Hi, welcome back. In this session on information trading, I want to focus on trading based upon public information, and in particular, one type of public information, earnings reports. Now, let's face it, if you're a publicly traded company, you have to reveal information to markets. That information can take the form of earnings reports, dividend announcements, acquisitions, other news announcements. So there's a lot of public information that comes out about companies, more for some companies than others. And when that information hits the market, investors get a chance to react to it. If that information contains good news relative to what people expected to see, you should see the stock price go up. And if it contains bad news, you should see the stock price go down. So let's get a little more specific. Let's focus on earnings announcements. Every year, U.S. companies make at least four earnings announcements. Every three months, you see an earnings announcement come out from the company. Outside the U.S., you might have semi-annual or even annual announcements, but this is a rite of passage for publicly traded companies where you report to markets and markets react. Why are earnings announcements so critical? Because they tell the market how the company is doing, how its operations are performing, and whether numbers are meeting up to expectations. So when an earnings report comes out about a company, what's significant is not whether it contains good news or bad news in the conventional sense. Are the earnings positive or negative? Are they high or low? It's how high or low they are relative to expectations. So it's the key in earnings announcements is the news is not the actual earnings itself. It's what the actual earnings are relative to expectations. If the surprise is a positive surprise, the actual earnings are much greater than expected, you should expect to see the stock price go up. If the actual earnings are much lower than expected, you should see the stock price go down. And embedded in earnings announcements are other pieces of information about margins, about competition, about revenues, all of which markets get a chance to react to. So let's look to see whether the evidence backs up the notion that earnings reports convey news to markets. No surprise here. If you classify earnings reports based upon the surprise in the report, and what I'm doing here is I'm comparing the actual earnings to positive earnings, uh, to, to expected earnings, and if the actual earnings are much greater than expected, I'm classifying it as a positive surprise. If they're lower than expected, I'm classifying it as a negative surprise. And I've classified all earnings reports here into 10 groups, from most positive to most negative surprises. The overall evidence is not surprising. The most positive, the, the largest positive surprise companies tend to have the most positive return. So if you look at the blue line here, these are the companies where the actual earnings came in well above expectations and the stock price tend to go up the most. The companies which had the most negative earnings surprises, where the earnings were well below expectations, saw their stock prices go down. So no surprise here. But here are two sub surprising sub-findings. The first is, the way to read this graph is day zero is the day of the actual announcement. And on that day, there's obviously a price effect. But notice that prices start to drift up before positive surprises actually even hit the market and drift down before negative surprises even hit the market. I don't want to read too much into this, but at least looking at that data, it would suggest to me that there's some leakage of information, which is a fancy way of saying insiders are probably getting access to that information and trading ahead of you and I. This is the rest of the market. That's the first surprising result. The second is what happens after the earnings report comes out. Let me, in fact, focus in on what happens after the earnings report comes out. So if you look at the most positive surprises and you look at the returns after the earnings report comes out, the surprising finding is that prices continue to drift up. If you think back to our classification of markets into efficient markets, slow learning markets, or overreacting markets, the evidence seems to su suggest that at least in the cross-section on earnings reports that markets are slow learning. After the most positive surprises, prices tend to drift up. After the most negative surprises, prices tend to drift down. You're saying not by much, you're right, only by about 3%, but if you could make 3% after the most positive surprises, that adds up over time to a pretty significant return. So there is a post-announcement drift that suggests that markets are slow in learning and that you and I could exploit. In fact, here's another interesting finding. It turns out that U.S. companies report earnings in very predictable ways. They report them on pretty much the same day every year. So if your report comes out on April 22nd, I should expect to see your next report come out around the same day, if it's a weekend, maybe April 24th or 25th. But earnings reports are predictable in the sense of when they come out. 
And there are some companies where the expected announcement date comes and goes and the company hasn't reported earnings. So this study actually looks at earnings reports which are delayed relative to expectations. So, and earnings reports that come out early. And again, the evidence is not surprising. Er early earnings reports, it's not a big deal. You don't get, it's not much positive or negative news. In fact, the returns in the 30 days around those announcements is close to zero. But if you focus in on earnings announcements that are delayed by more than six days. So in other words, the expected announcement date was April 22nd and it's April 28th or 29th and it's still not come out. Those earnings reports contain disproportionately bad news. So what's, what's, what do you take out of this? If you're an investor and you're tracking companies, check out what the announcement date is for past first quarter earnings. Then make sure you keep track of that date. And if earnings haven't come out by that date, the more delay there is in earnings, the more worried you should get about what kind of information will be contained in that earnings report. Now here's an interesting study that looks at intraday reaction to earnings reports. So earnings reports come out at 10.30 in the morning. What happens in the first 10 minutes, the first 30 minutes, the first one hour? So the way to read this graph is this is the instantaneous reaction. So if you have a positive announcement, for, so basically favorable and unfavorable are basically positive reports and negative reports, positive surprise and negative surprises. Negative surprise comes out, immediately the price drops 25%. A positive surprise comes out, the price jumps 10%, only 10% 10, 10 immediately. One hour after the announcement, the stock price is up 50, so 55% 55 of the price reaction has happened within one hour for positive surprises and 70% for negative surprises. In fact, looking across the in all four time periods, it looks like negative earnings surprises get incorporated into stock prices a little faster than positive surprises. But here's the interesting finding. Even if you track three hours after the earnings report, only about 77% of the surprise has been incorporated in. So if you're tracking a company and earnings surprise comes out at 10 o'clock, you don't find out about it till one o'clock, you still might have a chance to get in and make the remaining 25%, but clearly, you'd much rather get in on the ground floor, re invest right after the earnings announcement rather than wait two or even three hours after the report because the bulk of the returns seem to be eaten up by that point in time. So what I would take out of this graph is if you're going to build an investment strategy built around earnings reports, you have to trade almost instantaneously after the report. Now some companies will undercut you because their earnings report will come out after close of trading, you know, 4 o'clock or 4 or 5 or 4 or 7, which means you got to get in and trade as quickly as you can. Maybe in the post, there are ways you might be able to trade in, you know, off the regular market. But the longer you wait, the less returns you make on these information announcements. A couple of other things to note about earnings announcements. Earnings quality seems to matter, which is if you look across companies, not all earnings surprises are made equal. A company that delivers a positive surprise because it made an accounting change, you should expect to see a smaller price impact than a company where there's a positive surprise because a company actually sold more, did much better, did much better operations. The second thing to look at is the earnings reports often focus on accrual earnings, traditional accounting earnings. It might make sense to look at cash earnings as well. The problem often is you don't get to see those numbers till days after the actual earnings report. But there are studies that show that companies that report higher accrual earnings without cash earnings going up. In other words, they're reporting higher earnings because they sold a lot of stuff on credit. So their cash earnings don't track their accrual earnings. Those companies have poorer quality earnings, less impact on stock prices and companies where accrual earnings and cash earnings both go up at the same time. So it's not just the amount of earnings, it's the quality of the earnings that matters, which means you should probably look at the other information that comes out in the earnings report. How much did revenues go up? What were the margins like before you actually react to that report? So if you want to make mo money on, on, on off earnings announcements, here are a couple of suggestions. Play the drift, which is Assuming you cannot tell which companies are going to have positive surprises, which ones are going to have, which ones are going to have negative surprises, wait till after the earnings announcement. Trade almost instantaneously after the surprise, but be selective. Don't just buy every company that has an earning a positive surprise. Focus in on smaller, less liquid companies because there the drift is likely to be larger and more pronounced. And try to invest in companies that have higher quality earnings. If nothing else, at least focus on companies where the positive earnings surprise 
is accompanied by positive top line growth because that might be an indicator that the company's earnings is more sustainable. And if you can get ahead of the game, go for it. In other words, try to get find the companies where the positive surprises are going to come next week. Now, that might be tough to do, but there might be ways in which you can mine the data, both in terms of accounting earnings and stock prices and trading volume, to see if you can invest in a company two days before a positive earnings surprise. So sell short on a company two days before a negative surprise, because that's where the real money is to be made. But uh, thank you very, very much for listening, and I hope you have, you have good luck with your next earnings announcement investment.